This month we will be talking about the future and looking at the next generation of SOCs, as well as the new Pine Phone KDE edition. This is the video version of the community update, so this will not include as many details as the blog post, but this video should give you the synopsis of the community update. We are happy to let you know that there are now sub-forums for the Pinecube and the SO Edge SBC. We also now have Discord channels for the Pine Soul as well as the Nutcracker Challenge. And if you use another platform for chat, then we will be setting up more chat bridges for other protocols soon. We are also proud to announce that we have made our donations to the Postmarket OS team from the Pinephone Postmarket OS Community Edition. We are very grateful for all their work they have put into the mobile Linux community in the last few months, and we firmly believe that this sizable donation will be put to good use and benefit all Linux on mobile development. Unfortunately, there have been some issues with our chat bridge. We are forced to disconnect IRC from our chat bridge because of some issues with IRC. There has also been some delays in the bridge while people are talking. As a result, the chat bridge is going to have to be reworked, so we are going to see some downtime for a day or two sometime during January. We also found out recently that 1 in 100 Manjaro Edition Pine phones are shipping with Postmarket OS instead of Manjaro. We are sorry for this error, but luckily it is very easy to fix just by flashing Manjaro to the MMC using Jump Drive. Recently, we launched the Nutcracker Challenge, which is our reverse engineering effort to create a 100% open source drop-in replacement for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. If this challenge succeeds, we will be able to make Pine phones as well as Pinebook Pros among other Pine devices that have 100% open source Wi-Fi and Bluetooth firmware. After the announcement of this challenge, we immediately received a lot of attention, and in the time of writing this video, we have received 86 pull requests, 49 of which have been merged. All of this effort was made by 37 contributors who would be rewarded by the Pinecone Evaluation Board. The first very small batch of Pinecones have already shipped and the second one is being manufactured. Even though the developers and contributors don't have any hardware available yet, they have made great progress on analyzing the blobs, improving documentation, and fixing bugs in the SDK. We are also happy to announce that Buffbo, which is the company that designed the chip, has promised more documentation and low-level code, and they have already provided us with an approved datasheet and reference manual. We have picked our SOCs for the next generation of Pine64 products. In the future, we expect to replace the RK3328 SOC used in the non-pro Pine64 devices with the RK3566 SOC. This will provide more power as well as up to 8GB of RAM in faster I.O. Don't worry too much about upgrading your Pine64 products though to the new generation of SOCs. Mainline kernel support for this SOC is very far out, so these SOCs will not be in Pine64 products for quite a while. LTS devices, as well as the Pinephone and original Pinebook, will still be supported for a very long time. At first, we are going to be creating two new single board computers with these SOCs. One will be a standard single board computer, while the other one will be aimed at developers so that developers can bring up Linux builds on the platform and port their code to it. But this is just a portion of our strategy for the year 2021 and beyond. We have many more announcements to make in the next few months involving these new SOCs. We're teaming up with the KDE community to develop the next community edition of Pinephones. This is the first Pinephone batch that ships with a Plasma Mobile UI as opposed to a Fosh or Lomare UI. We plan on having pre-orders for it starting December 1st, so expect a blog post announcing this edition's availability soon. This edition comes in the same two previous hardware configuration options as the Manjaro edition, with one configuration having 2GB of RAM and 16 gigs of storage, while the other one having 3GB of RAM and 32 gigs of storage. This edition also ships the same board as the Manjaro edition of the Pinephone, and as usual, the proceeds of the KDE Community Edition will go to the KDE Community. Shipping of the Manjaro Community Edition is going very well. In fact, we started shipping ahead of schedule, and EU shipments have also gone really smoothly. We also now sell the 3GB of RAM, 32GB of storage, 1.2B main board on the Pine Store, and owners of the Pinephone Braveheart and Ubuntu Touch Community Editions of the Pinephone get a discount as a thank you for being early adopters. So if you're looking for an upgrade, if you have an older Pine phone or if you bought the cheaper model, you can do that now. On the software side of things, there have been some major improvements made to Maggie's 5.9 Linux kernel 
including some things that even end users will notice, such as improved voice call quality, more stable Bluetooth support, and automatic video out through the USB-C dock. The phone also feels more responsive after a pull request from Maggie because the refresh rate is now 60 hertz, which has been increased by one third of the original display rate. Because of this, many PinePhone OSs are adopting Maggie's new kernel changes. Finally, we have been making great progress on the QIO iOS charging case, and it's going to enter production very soon, and we expect it to be available early next year. The Pinebook Pro docking deck has entered production, and will be available for pre-order very shortly. The Pinebook Pro docking deck now works on kernels 5.9 and onwards thanks to IUFAN, and the Manjaro build that the Pinebook Pro ships with will support the dock out of the box in the future. The docking deck is perfectly color matched to the Pinebook Pro, and it has the same type of coating on the middle, as well as a Pine64 logo and certification on the bottom, so it won't distract you from your Pinebook Pro while it's plugged in. Thanks to Armbian, we also now have well-maintained builds of Debian and Ubuntu for the Pinebook Pro, both of which include XFCE. There is also a brand new build of FidoS, which is a Chromium OS fork that allows support for Android and Linux apps. So if you need a Chromebook for you or your kids, this runs very well on the Pinebook Pro. PineCell has entered production and the firmware has been polished up, so you will be able to purchase one later this month or early next month. It not only functions well, but it looks great and it's very compact. The SO Edge Compute module will be available in the Pine Store soon. We are aiming for it to be available sometime in December, and the progress of the software is going very well. We currently have some builds with the BSP kernel, but we are making progress on mainlining the SOC for the SO Edge, so soon it will be able to run mainline Linux. The wiki page for the SO Edge is also now up, so if you are an early adopter, please make sure to contribute to the wiki page for the SO Edge. Anyone who has member status on the Pine64 forum can contribute to the wiki page for it, so please help with the SO Edge's documentation. InfiniTime has been receiving a lot of feedback from users and contributions from developers. InfiniTime 0.9 came out with a new music app, an improved notification UI, and many bug fixes. The Gadget Bridge app also now has support for InfiniTime's music app, and you can now upgrade InfiniTime's firmware over the air. JF and Daniel T are also working on a tool to allow over the air updates to upgrade the bootloader for both InfiniTime and Wasp OS. And work is being put into making the bootloader more reliable. The Pinecube's early software is progressing very well. We currently have an internal build of Debian running the mainline kernel with some patches, and it already has all of the core functionality. Thank you to Gammy for making massive strides on the software for the Pinecube. We also now have a Pinecube subform, and much discussion has been taking place on the Pinecube Discord chat. And please contribute to the Pinecube wiki page. That's all folks, if you are interested in more videos about Linux software or hardware, then check out my YouTube or LBRY channel called Pizza Living Nerd. Also, special thanks to Gammy, JF, Luka Zerzinski, and Martijan Bram for help with this video script, as well as taking b-roll footage for this video. Thank you.